Hey everyone, my name is Daquan Johnson and I'm an MD-PhD student. And today's video was requested on a previous video requesting that I talk about the pros and cons of being an MD-PhD program. This should be a relatively short video, and so let's get right into it. The first thing we'll talk about are pros. First and obvious thing that everyone thinks about is the fact that it's all paid for. So that means we get our tuition and our fees remitted in addition to getting a stipend for our living expenses while we're in the program. And that's a huge plus, especially considering that when we talk about the cons, most MD PhDs will be making less than their MD counterparts. Second thing is that doing an MD PhD combined program is slightly shorter than doing a PhD and an MD separately. Because traditionally a PhD is about six years and an MD is four years, that's 10 years of training. But in the MD PhD program, we can get it done in about seven to eight years. And that's because our medical school classes get credit it towards our grad school courses, reducing some of the training and coursework in our PhD. There's also built-in programming as doing a combined program compared to doing it separately because it can help assist us in the integration between our medicine and our research. While we're in medical school, we can continue to do things that will help improve and strengthen our research and graduate school side of our training. And while we're in graduate school, we can continue to supplement and improve our clinical training while we're in grad school as well. Another thing especially is important for a physician scientist is if we wanna to continue to have a research career, we'll have significant practice in writing grants and building our skills in the research arena, which is very important. We get a chance to write practice fellowship, uh, fellowship grants in addition to other small grants for our research. So that's one other plus. So some of the less tangible pros are that there's a level of prestige associated with doing an MD-PhD because there's already prestige associated with getting an MD and becoming a physician, as well as getting a PhD and becoming a renowned researcher. But the ability to complete and do both carries a different air and sometimes opens a few doors for you. And then as a result, there's a perceived value that's added to you as an individual. Because not only when you walk into a, a medical institution that you can use your skills and produce revenue for the hospital as a clinician, but you also have the opportunity to be able to bring in grants and large institutional grants from experience to start up new programs and start up new research and clinical trials. The last thing is that you have many careers to choose from. You can choose from still being a clinician, a researcher, a farm, going into pharma, becoming a consultant. Many different things leaves many different doors open. Now, some of the cons that people immediately think of is that it's a longer pathway. Eight years, 10 years can be a very long time. A lot of life happens then compared to just doing six years in your PhD or doing four years for your medical school and moving on to your training. And as a result, because of those extra years, you lose about four years of your end of career time where you're basically making the most of your money compared to your MD counterparts. So on average, MD PhDs will earn less than the MD counterparts. And some other things is that you invest so much time and energy into training to become a good physician scientist. The sad part is sometimes you may not use both sides of your training. You may decide to go full-time clinician. You may decide to become a full-time researcher. You may decide to leave the medical industry and the academic industry altogether. So you might put in a lot of time and energy and it might be seen as wasted. Other things that people have brought up is that it can be hard to make long-term friends because people move around so much. While you're stuck here for the next decade of your training, your medical school classmates are graduating, going off to residency, and your PhD counterparts are graduating and going off to postdoctoral trainings. So sometimes it's really difficult to make those long-term friends that are moving away while you're still stuck in your training. Another thing is that very few people understand what you do. <laughs> Many of the times, our parents don't understand, our spouses don't understand, our friends don't understand, and even our classmates sometimes don't understand some of the training and some of the things we're going through. So we'll always go through this thing of like, what do you exactly do? Funny story is that one of my classmates was telling me that his aunt thought that he had quit medical school and was yelling at him, but he had just transitioned to being a graduate student. He hasn't quit medical school. It's just a part of the process. Another thing is that because we're so different as a result, when people don't really understand what we're doing, sometimes your med school classmates and your grad school classmates might not like you. You have to deal with that because the fact that your faculty members will treat you slightly different. So those are some things to think about as well. And then also thinking along both sides of the pathways can be quite draining, especially while you're training and learning how to do it. 
understanding the fact that the cultures of research and cultures of medicine are very different and it can be quite taxing sometimes having the juggle and switch between the two and behave a certain way to make sure that you are behaving properly within the norms of those spaces. The last thing is it can be figuring it hard to figure out to let life happen. It can be hard to figure out when to start a family, when to get married, when to have kids. And then the last thing to think about is despite all the work you put into your training, there's still so much uncertainty about whether or not will you be able to do both in the end? Will you have enough time? Sometimes you might have to work 120 hours once you get to your first job to make sure you can support and fund your lab, fund the research technician you need to get your lab off the ground. And so sometimes understanding whether or not you can do both it may be a very unsure and a very scary future. So those are some of the cons and some of the pros of being an MD-PhD um, and also going through an MD-PhD program. Hopefully that provides a little bit more clarity and provides a little bit more information. And if you have any more questions or want me to explain a little bit more of these things, comment down below and I'll be more than happy to respond. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.